guys, check this out. Unbelievable, you guys aren't gonna believe this, what this is actually. And um, we're here at LA Percussion Rentals, as you know, we'll have Abby explain the background. Amazing, incredible instrument. I'm so excited <laughs> for what we've got. All right, handing off the camera. All right. This is Abby, she's gonna talk us through this. Okay, so these are called metal onklong or aluminum chimes. Mm. And the really important thing to know is these are actually fashioned from what are more traditional bamboo onklong from Indonesia. So quick glimpse over here behind them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are... And these are individual, but they're all in a set right now. Yeah. So... What's going on essentially is you have these tubes. This is the thing that's actually making the sound. You have these little feet up here mm -hmm. and the feet are a contact point. Mm. The tubes are tuned. This is a very, very like rustic set that are also from Amol Richards. And, and they're two. Yeah, and we're gonna do a separate video about them, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to show you guys, I think it's important to know that this, the metal ones we're showing you, um, you know, were made in America and these are Indonesian. Indonesian, and they, yeah. And the metal ones come from the Indonesian idea. Right, so, right. So, okay, back to these, so. So here's a side view. You can see there's yeah. three bars, right, in each one. Yeah. And these ones are upside down from the ones you have over there. Uh-huh. It just kind of um, changes the way you play them a little bit, but it doesn't actually change the sound very much. Mm -hmm. But these ones are metal. Mm. And they're actually from 1901. 1901, and 1901. we know that because. Look at that stamp right there. Where is it? Can you see that? Yeah, look at that. Yeah. 1901. Yeah. So I could go into a lot of info about these. I actually made a whole video about Onklong and it includes bamboo and metal Onklong. And we'll post that link in the description. Yep. But we're just gonna do like a quick overview right now. So they're pretty cool. So these ring three octaves mm -hmm. of the same note. Yep. If you can hear. And they're chromatic. They're chromatic, yes. Wow. So if you look, I'll, I'm going to bring the camera down at the level. You see the lower and the upper, and the low is the white keys, right? So this would be C. C sharp, T, D sharp, E. Is that right? No, no, this is F. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I keep confusing they're, my C's so and my they're F. They're disorienting. They can so, be a bit disorienting. So C is all the way down here. Yeah. Right? So C, uh, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, uh, so on. And then these would be the, the sharps or the accidentals. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then what, what do we have up here? They're, they're So I don't hinges? know. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure who fashioned this whole thing. It might have been Emil that fashioned them. Because when you're in the studio, um, you need you need things to be quick mm -hmm. and you can't hire like six players yeah. to do one instrument. So, you know, the traditional way of playing these is actually kind of individually. Uh -huh. And we put them on racks and you'll see them on racks in Indonesia as well. But you also see ensembles where they're, it's kind of like handbells. More like handbells, yeah. Holding one or two. I see, yeah. But in the studio, you need it to kind of just like plug and play. And so I'm not sure exactly who put these on here. It might've been Emil. And with these, where do you even put the music? Because obviously usually yeah. you would have the music across the other, you know, on the stand across from the instrument. You mm -hmm. can't do that here. So I, so that makes it even more problematic. Not yeah. that most people would need to do that, but yeah. ser seriously, like you'd probably have to just memorize the part. Yeah. It's kind of like reading on chimes, but a lot worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so any more about the construction or the sound or maybe, maybe I can just stand back and let you play something a little. How about that? Yeah, so I mean, you can shake them. Yeah. Or you can hit them. But so what I'm mm. saying is they swing around a lot, right? And so what I saw in Indonesia, I didn't go to Indonesia, but from some videos I saw is they put them upside down and had those kind of rubber band things on there. Mm -hmm. And that's called unsung towel. Mm -hmm. And so that makes it so they don't swing as much. Ah, uh, right. There's suspension yeah. going on, and I can tighten those as needed. Yeah. But this we're keeping because this is part of, you know, studio, the studio scene, these actual ones in this way. So we're trying to keep things yeah. how they were 
Um, but yeah, sight reading or like, you know, 16th notes at 140, <laughs> not probably well, going to happen as much. Exactly. But that's another thing that, that the composers need to know, yes. right? And that's something that Emil did a lot is work with composers yes. To, yes. to educate them on here's the instrument, but let me tell you what's reasonable, right? What, how yeah. would you, you don't want to write, you're not going to be writing up and down the scale, big cadenzas for <laughs> metal unclump. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. The runs, like all, like having you know, the, having quick runs is pretty rough on here. Yeah. Um, but I think that what's so interesting about this is this color and this exact instrument has been used in so many scores. So yeah. Um, we have some of those linked on our website. I know there's more because I know composer Michael Giacchino is a big fan of them. Mm -hmm. But they were like on um, The Incredibles and Ratatouille. And they were in, I think, pretty much every episode of Lost. Mm. So, if you heard like this sound. Wow. It's this set. Nice. Yeah. Anything else do you think? So, let's just hear them a little bit more. I'm going to just, okay. let's just listen. I'm going to stop talking. Yeah. Like it like this. Yeah. It's kind of a. Uh... I feel like there's some sort of mathematical or art making opportunity that we're missing out on right here. <laughs> <laughs> Put some paint brushes on the other side. Um, and this thing is tall too. It's what is this? Six and a half feet maybe. Yeah, yeah. And big and heavy, but how awesome. And look at, I'm just want to, I want to do a slow pan here. You guys look at how, I think just patina, right? It's beautiful. Look at this. 1901. Yeah. Oh. So these were made by the Deegan company. Oh, it is Deegan. Okay. Yeah. And wondering. so Deegan, John Calhoun Deegan went to the World's Fair in 1863, I believe. And they're... What I'm kind of putting together is, I think he saw um, some Hong Kong there. He saw some Indonesian mm. musicians there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you know anything about the Deegan Company, they would make these novelty instruments. Mm -hmm. They would make these tuned sets of instruments that aren't usually tuned. Like we have mm. a tuned set of sleigh bells, uh -huh. like chromatically tuned. Wow. And so I think this was another one of those. They were innovators. And yeah, yeah. I could see, I easily see that well. So really a unique instrument. Do you know of any other sets of in, this instrument? Is there? There are a few out there. There are a few some, out there? Yeah, so these ones are called aluminum chimes. And then there's organ chimes that actually have four notes on each. And there are a handful of people who have them. Mm. A lot of people like restore them, but we like the dark sound and we're wondering if the patina is helping to bring that dark sound. So we don't actually, we didn't want to do too much to it. Yeah. We're kind of just like, okay, we'll fix, you know, there's little things here to fix, but in terms of refinishing them, I think we're just kind of like, yeah. Well, sometimes like, leaving stuff is better because yeah. you start restoring, you end up changing it and you can uncover some stuff that then you can't, you know, you then you're stuck and it's different. There's it's no turning be back. Different. Right, there's yeah. no turning back. Whereas this is, uh, it doesn't really need restoring. It's got a personality, it's got a beautiful sound. I mean, Aside from just maintaining that, you know, that it functions, yeah. right? You don't need to do much. Yeah. Man, so cool. Let me hand this back to you. And I want to say thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, if you appreciate this kind of thing, let us know. And, and visit the LA Percussion Rentals website, too. That's a link below. Um, find out about Hong Kong. Amazing. How did you do the, the lost sound again? Is it just a cluster? Yes. Up at the top. There you go. I'll go a little higher. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. It's <laughs> very satisfying. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Hit the bell before you click away. Like, subscribe. See you next time.